Come on. Oh, that was a really nice polo. Wait, are you contagious? Oh man, you've got all these lovely cars here and I've got to go home in a Volvo. <laughs> Generally, all good. All looking lovely. Good afternoon, you absolutely beautiful subscribers. Welcome back to another cheeky little monkey vlog. I'm actually off to see Mr. Scouse. Well, not see him. I'm going to just drop the camera off. I've got all the um, all the data um, from yesterday, so I'm going to drop the camera back to him today so we can carry on filming. He's actually going to be doing a quick little inspection of the FD2 that I actually managed to pick up off Dan about two weeks ago. I actually did a straight swap on my Mazda RX-7 FC Turbo 2. Dan actually said to me, if I do ever sell the car, make sure I give him a shout first because he's really, really keen to buy it. And obviously they're extremely rare now and it's very, very hard to find a Turbo 2, let alone a Turbo 2 in that condition because the car's in really, really good nick. Last week he popped down from London with the K24 powered FD2, which you guys have seen previously on the channel. I'll chuck a little video clip here so you can have a quick watch. <laughs> It's a pretty potent car. It's currently running about 270 horsepower, but it's still got quite a restrictive exhaust system on it. I believe he's got a D-cat and a back box, a spoon back box, but the center section is all the standard FD2 stuff. Once you actually fit a full three inch system the full way through on the FD2, it should be good for about 300 horsepower, which is a massive amount of horsepower for a, for a naturally aspirated car. And needless to say, it is pretty goddamn quick, even as it stands now. I've had quite a few people message me about the FD2. Obviously, it's been a little bit tricky to kind of sell it during the, uh, the current circumstances. Um, but yeah, today Scouse is gonna put the car on a ramp for me and he's just going to do a little video um, sort of showing underneath the chassis and some of the sort of more common rust spots on the FT2. To be fair, the car's actually in really good condition, but obviously it's a £12,000 car and people just want a little bit of peace of mind. Oh, that was a really nice polo. Obviously, it's quite a lot of money, so yeah, it's definitely worth just doing a little video so the guys or the potential buyers can kind of have a look. I have got one chap who's actually got an EK9 Type R, which is looking to do a possible part exchange on. He's pretty keen on the FD2. Um, yeah, over the next few weeks, I will let you guys know um, what goes down and what kind of deal I managed to get going. I wasn't actually really keen to sell my RX-7, but I really need the money so I can invest it into my merchandise business. So hopefully once the car sells, I can invest a shitload of money into the merchandise and really, really get the business going. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying the little sort of mini video series we've been doing with Scouse and Dave. I am actually looking to make them a regular, a regular part of the channel. Um, so yeah, feel free to let us know in the comment section below if you're kind of digging what they're doing or if you'd like to see any changes. Massive shout out to Dave and to Scouse as well for being absolute legends doing this. I'm going to chuck both of their Instagrams down here. So if you guys could really be real kind and give them a little follow just to show your appreciation and, and my appreciation. Um, yeah, I'd really, really appreciate it. That's a lot of appreciation. <laughs> Look at this weather as well, man. We've literally got Spanish weather in the UK at the moment. It's 20 degrees. It's been blue sky for about two weeks. Goes to show you what the weather is really like once they stop uh, flying all those crazy planes everywhere. Anyhow, I shall be at Scouse's in about five minutes time. So yeah, see you guys down there in a bit. I spy with my little viewfinder, because Scouse broke my camera. Something beginning with GT86. Ooh, look at that exhaust, man. Got a set of hard race lower arms as well. And look at that, a set of Tyne coilovers. Cool, fancy pants. Wait, are you contagious? No. Oh, hang on a second. Viruses aren't contagious. They're not even scientifically proven. <coughs> Sorry, I got a very bad cough today, Scouse. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> you get better looking by the day you do. <laughs> How are you, man? Yeah, I'm okay. Trying to sort out my car, so yeah. frustrating, but good. You're looking like you've got a bit of colour, man. You're looking a bit tanned. You look fresh. <laughs> and from me and the audience, thank you very much for doing all your filming. It's been very kind of you, man. It's been good fun. It was hard at first. Yeah. Because normally I'm used to talking to somebody behind the camera. Yeah. And then now to change that to talk to the camera itself is a bit... Um, it was a bit difficult first, yeah. but yeah, can't get in hang of it. I think you're doing really well though, man, honestly, and it's good, it's fun, and... Right, we'll turn the camera off now, so they can't see us hugging. <laughs> <laughs> One FD2. 
Yeah, like I said before, you guys have seen this car in an actual car review on the channel, and it's a really, really nice car. Dan has actually spent a small fortune getting it to where you see today. Not really much to see, because obviously it's got a K20 head and it all looks pretty similar to how it was before. There we go. Obviously looks very similar to a K20. Well, it's got a K20 head, but it's a K24 bottom end from an Accord, 2.4 litre. Um, yeah, as you guys can see, lovely and clean. She has got a little bit dusty just from being in storage. Um, but yeah, paintwork, to be fair, isn't bad. There's a few little marks around it, but it is in very good condition nonetheless. Quick little look in the interior. All the seats are in lovely condition. Very little bolster wear in keeping with the mileage. Get rid of that key, that's pretty annoying. Just under 50,000 miles as well. I think 48,000 it's on, which is actually very low for one of these. 47,000 miles, so yeah, really, really decent mileage. It's got a nice little Sony double din as well, which is pretty cool. Down here you can see the build number, which is 596. So this was the 596th one they ever made. Dash is all in nice condition. Dan's also put some little cheeky tweeters here in the A-pillars. And he's also put a stereo in the back as well. The stereos in these aren't too bad, but if you like your music, you're gonna like this. So he's just got a couple of uh, crossovers there and an amplifier as well and he's also upgraded all the speakers inside interior is actually in really good condition very very little wear as you guys can see all the carpets are still in nice condition and then in here we've also got a set of real engine mounts as well which dan actually supplied with the car which you can see there they're a thousand pounds worth really expensive one of the stock mounts has got a little bit of wear you can kind of hear a little bit of movement when you pull off obviously once you fit these brand new mounts that will all go away dan actually never got round to changing the mounts because obviously i put i was told him about the rx7 and before he actually got to put them on the car he went and bought the RX-7 off me, hence we've got the mounts with the car. But I will, however, supply the mounts with the sale so whoever buys it can, can, uh, can fit them and, uh, and get rid of that small little gremlin. Yeah, on the whole, as you guys can see, she is a pretty, pretty tidy car. I've also put it up for a pretty cheap price as well. I mean, a stock one of these with about 50,000 miles, they go for about 15, 16 grand with the K24 as well, which Dan spent six grand doing the conversion. Um, it's quite a valuable car. I've got it up for 12 and a half, which is very, very cheap. But obviously, like I said, I'm just trying to uh, recoup some money and get some investment into my business. Hence, I'm not looking for, for sort of stupid money. Anyway, Scousy, I'm going to pull you off GT86s and get you back onto the true, the true goodness, which is Honda. It's Toyota, mate. <laughs> you know I love it's Toyota, glorious. man. Toyota's my, I'm, Toyota's my baby. Uh, the idea with that is it's really to get it on the ramp check for rust, maybe have a little look online to see where the common places they rust. Relatively new modern car, it probably won't even be rusty. Yeah, maybe like check up in the arches and stuff and, and uh, yeah, just make a nice little video. Oh man, you've got all these lovely cars here and I've got to go home in a Volvo. <laughs> Woo! You know me man, Monkey loves those shit boxes, right? See you guys soon, love you. Well, you know, the Volvo has nothing on the 206, so yeah, don't you worry about that. Uh, you should all be jealous about that, I guess one. So really all we're doing under here is checking for any leaks, you know, things like CV boot split, any uh, rust really. I mean, a car this age, you're not really going to have anything bad with, to be honest. You know, usually the main area to kind of go at the seals and stuff like that, but you know, you can see they've actually put an extra bit of a like, seam sealer all across the seals there. They're all actually pretty good. A little bit of surface rust on this uh, middle section here, but literally tiny little dots. Yeah, it's just not an old car. It's not like some of the S bodies and R bodies where they may be 15, 20 years old. And uh, yeah, they're more likely to have a bit more. In fact, some of them are older than 20 years old, some of them are 25, 30 years old. Generally, all good. Exhaust isn't going to fall off anytime soon. Obviously, been put in for the engine conversion. I don't know if it's custom made, maybe. Another thing you can't really see from when you're just outside by the edge of the car is just you know checking the wheels for seeing if they've got any bulges in the tyres and stuff like that. I mean, obviously, the front ones you can turn on full lock can't really do the same with the rears. Just a bit of dirt or something in there. That's the other thing, just checking for cracked rims really. All looking good, tyre treads all good, no punctures. All lovely and clean. Worst thing to see is a C reboot split, I'm honest. Yeah, even up inside the arch, I mean, all nice and clean really. <clears throat> Shocks aren't leaking, springs are all been changed so they're not gonna be broken or anything silly like that. Teen ones, pretty decent. All looking lovely.
So guys, that brings us to the end of another episode. Um, started off with one monkey and ended up with another, but I hope you all enjoyed it all the same. Um, as always, please leave any comments in the comment section, give us a little like and a share, and uh, I hope to see you all soon. La, la, la.